hi guys this is ca balakrishna from lecturepedia.in how are you hope you people are doing well even i am fantastic in the today's class we will be revising reporting chapter basically in this chapter various provisions and various standards with respect to reporting aspect will be present all the provisions okay whether in the with respect to auditing standards or with respect to companies act which deals with reporting aspect you can find here basically entire 700 series first of all i will give you an idea of what standards will be present in this reporting chapter from the 700 series entire 700 series that is ss 700 which deals with the format of the audit report and ss 701 which deals with key audit matters camps and ss 705 which deals with modification of uh, auditor's opinion and ss 706 emphasis of matter paragraph and other matter paragraph ss 710 which deals with comparative information and ss 720 which deals with other information and these are the six standards with respect to 700 series that you will find in reporting chapter and apart from these standards we will also be discussing section number 143 of the companies act basically in section number 143 subsection 1 we will be having certain six points on which the auditor needs to inquire upon those six points will be discussing and also under section 143 subsection 3 there will be certain points on which auditor needs to report upon and un under section 143 subsection 12 there will be uh, fro uh, fraud related reporting responsibility that will be there so all these provisions we will be covering in this reporting chapter and also there is reporting with respect to caro companies auditors report order that uh, caro 2020 will be revising in a separate video i will not be dealing with caro 2020 in this video hope that is clear so let us start with sa 700 which is a basic standard which deals with the format of the audit report SA 700 forming an opinion and reporting on the financial statements first of all in the audit report you will give title of the audit report as independent auditors report and next you will be having address to whom this audit report is being addressed generally in case of companies it will be addressed to shareholders right after that the third paragraph would be auditors opinion now in this auditor's opinion paragraph you need to represent or you need to mandatorily uh, mention these five points what are those five points you have to identify the entity whose financial statements have been audited okay you, you have to identify the name of the entity whose financial statements have been audited and you need to state the fact that these financial statements have been audited okay and then identify the title of each statement that is forming part of financial statements okay in the financial statements you'll be having balance sheet profit and loss cash flow statement so you need to identify then the name of each such a statement forming part of financial statements in this opinion paragraph and you should also refer to notes to the accounts and specify the date or period that is covered by these financial statements generally the balance sheet it will be prepared as on 31st march of every year and the profit and loss statement it will be prepared from 1st april to 31st march of a year so you need to clearly mention the period that has been covered by these financial statements so you need to take care that these five points you'll mention in your opinion paragraph hope that is clear next once the opinion paragraph is done you will be having a basis for opinion paragraph now in this basis for opinion paragraph you have to state that auditor has conducted his audit as per standards on auditing okay you need to clearly mention that standards on auditing have been followed 
and you should also make a reference to the auditor's responsibility paragraph okay in this audit report itself after management's responsibility paragraph there will be auditor's responsibility paragraph so in the basis for opinion paragraph you should give a reference to the auditor's opinion uh, sorry auditor's responsibility paragraph make a reference and you should also include a statement that auditor is independent okay auditor has conducted his audit independently this statement you need to make and finally you should also state that you have obtained sufficient and appropriate audit evidence that is necessary for the purpose of framing the opinion these four points you need to mention in the basis for opinion paragraph hope that is clear after basis for opinion paragraph is completed, if as per SA 570, you need to include going concern related paragraph. Okay, if there is material uncertainty with respect to going concern assumption, then you will include the paragraph related to that going concern. If there is no material uncertainty, you will not include this going concern paragraph. So based on the requirement of SA 570, you have to decide whether to include this going concern related paragraph or not. Next. As per SA 706, if you wanted to emphasize on any matter that is properly disclosed in the financial statements, you can include emphasis of matter paragraph. So once the basis for opinion paragraph is done, you will check whether you need to include going concern related paragraph as per SA 570. After that, you will check whether you wanted to include emphasis of matter paragraph as per SA 706. And then you will also determine whether you need to include any key audit matter paragraph as per SS 701. Basically, key audit matter paragraph, it is applicable only for listed entities. For unlisted entities, it is not mandatory. So, based on the requirement of those respective standards, you will decide whether to include these paragraphs in your audit report or not. After key audit matter paragraph is done, you will check whether you, uh, you wanted to include any other matter paragraph as per SS 706, we will be discussing what is other matter paragraph, emphasis of matter paragraph, what is the difference between these two, all that we will be discussing in SS 706. And once other matter paragraph is done, you will be including management's responsibility. What is the responsibility of the management with respect to this uh, uh, financial statements? First of all, they are responsible for preparing the financial statements as per applicable financial reporting framework. That point you will include in this paragraph. And they are also responsible for establishing internal controls in the organization. You will also include this point. And they are also responsible for making assessment with respect to going concern assumption of the entity, whether entity uh, can continue to use going concern assumption or not this assessment management has to make and finally oversight of financial reporting process they need to oversee this entire financial reporting process in their organization these are the four responsibilities of the management which you will include in management responsibilities paragraph once management responsibility paragraph is done you will be including auditor's responsibility paragraph so what will be the responsibility of the auditor first of all auditor he needs to identify and assess risk of material misstatement and then he will perform audit procedures after performing audit procedures he has to obtain audit evidences see identify and assess risk of material misstatement design and perform audit procedures obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidences and then man in the management responsibility paragraph you have included that management is responsible for establishing internal controls uh, now once management established internal controls auditors responsibility is to verify whether those internal controls are working properly or not so obtain an understanding of the internal controls and then evaluate appropriateness of accounting policies that the management is using for the purpose of preparing these financial statements and management has also made an assessment of going concern assumption right now auditor he needs to verify whether such assessment made by the management is appropriate or not okay so conclude appropriateness of management's use of going concern assumptions these are some general responsibilities of the auditor apart from this there are also some other responsibilities of auditor see auditor needs to communicate with those charged with governance about the scope the timing of the planned 
audit he needs to communicate these aspects to the those charged with governance and also during his audit if he finds any significant deficiencies in the internal control he needs to communicate these significant deficiencies in the internal control to management and also to the those charged with governance that is one of the responsibility of the auditor and also auditor he needs to give a statement to the those charged with governance that he will comply with all the ethical requirements okay relating to this a statement has to be given by the auditor and finally in case key audit matters are communicated state that those matters were more significant in the current period audit about key audit matters we will be discussing in sa701 you need not worry about that okay so that is a responsibility of the auditor the uh, auditor's responsibility paragraph now where this auditor responsibility paragraph has to be included okay there are three ways in which you can present this auditor responsibility paragraph first way you can just include it in the audit report just like other paragraphs you can also include auditor's responsibility paragraph in the audit report itself just a second i'll just check whether i have switched on this recording or not yeah because sometimes what happens is without switching on recording i'll be just you know continuing the class after recording the uh, you know after uh, taking the class for one hour or like that i'll realize that i haven't switched on the recording it happened a lot of times so i'm just checking this so now the location of auditor's responsibility paragraph just like any other paragraph you can include this auditor's responsibility paragraph in the audit report itself that is one way another way you can give this auditor's responsibility paragraph as a annexure to the audit report that is the second way and coming to the third way in some cases if the appointment of auditor is made by some external authority then in such authorities website there might be auditor's responsibility that would have been listed if that is the case then auditor in his audit report he can just make a reference to such website of such external authorities website wherein the auditor's responsibility has been listed so these are the three ways in which auditor's responsibility paragraph can be presented hope that is clear next coming to other reporting responsibilities once auditor's responsibility uh, paragraph is done there will be uh, reporting responsibilities uh, under other legal and regulatory requirements now here for this paragraph you need to check whether reporting requirements under those other laws and regulations is in addition to those requirements that are present in standards or auditing or those Uh, requirements of laws and regulation are same as that of or belonging to the same points as required by standards on auditing if the reporting as per those other laws and regulations is in addition to the requirements that are present in standard on auditing then you need to include those additional reporting requirements under a separate section titled report on other legal and regulatory requirements otherwise that means if the reporting requirements of other law and regulation is with respect to similar aspects that are present in standards on auditing let's say for example in standards on auditing with respect to going concern paragraph if there is a material uncertainty you need to include the material uncertainty with respect to going concern paragraph with respect to going concern itself in some other law or regulation there is certain reporting responsibility on the auditor now if you see standard on auditing is requiring reporting with respect to the going concern and some other law and regulation is also requiring reporting with respect to the going concern now in this situation since you are already including a going concern related paragraph in your audit report in that paragraph itself by showing a proper bifurcation you can also report the reporting requirement of such other law and regulation with respect to the going concern because uh, both the requirements are related to going concern itself 
hope hope you are clear okay for that you need not again have a separate section by naming by name report uh, reporting under other legal and regulatory requirements hope that is clear so if the answer was no then present in the same section as related report elements required by ss by clearly differentiating them generally under this uh, report on uh, other legal and regulatory requirements we will be reporting matters as uh, required under section 143 subsection 1 and 143 subsection 3 okay next finally you will be having signature place of signature signature and date of auditors report next sometimes what happens is auditor he needs to conduct audit as per the accounting standards that are applicable in india as well as he might be required to make a reference to the sorry not accounting standards auditing standards let's say for example there is a company in india this company is subsidiary of a foreign company and this uh, since this company is present in india it needs to give its uh, audit report the which which has the which has been audited as per indian auditing standards to the respective authorities and at the same time it should also present its uh, you know financial statements audited as per the foreign jurisdiction of the parent company to that uh, foreign jurisdiction in that situations the auditor in his audit report he can make reference to the auditing standards that are applicable in india as well as the international auditing standards or the auditing standards which are related to such foreign jurisdiction provided certain conditions are fulfilled okay only if these conditions are present then you can refer both indian auditing standards as well as international auditing standards in your audit report otherwise you cannot refer both auditing standards and the in, uh, and the international auditing standards in your audit report so what are those conditions let us see can refer ss in the audit report in addition to international auditing standards only if no conflict between standards and auditing and ESA that leads the auditor. Okay, there should not be any conflict between auditing standards that are applicable in India and the international standards and auditing, which leads the auditor to give a different audit opinion. Okay, by applying the Indian auditing standards, he is arriving at a unmodified opinion but by using the international auditing standards he is arriving at a modified opinion then in this situation there is a contradiction between the two standards you cannot refer both the standards in the single audit report hope that is clear and auditors report include at minimum each of the elements specified by this standards on auditing okay if you are referring to both the standards on auditing applicable in india and also international standards on auditing such audit report should contain at, uh, at bare minimum the elements that are required by standards on auditing that are applicable in india okay we have just discussed the various paragraphs at minimum those paragraphs must be present in the audit report if you are referring both uh, standards on auditing and international standards on auditing if as per international standards on auditing if any of the paragraph that is required as per standards on auditing is not required then you cannot refer both standards on auditing and international standards on auditing in the same audit report hope that is clear next supplementary information not required by applicable financial reporting framework presented in financial statements sometimes what entities they might do is even though the financial reporting framework does not require presenting supplementary information just for a better understanding the management they might present supplementary information like let's say for example they can present various ratios or they can present trend of uh, the sales figure of the entity all this is a supplementary financial information which is obviously not required by applicable financial reporting framework now in this situation 
how the auditor has to deal with this whether auditor's opinion uh, whether auditor has to give his opinion on that supplementary financial information also or he need not give for this he need to check whether such a supplementary financial information is integral part of a financial statements integral part of financial statements means how you will determine whether it is integral part or not if the users of the financial statements cannot understand the financial statements until and unless they read the supplementary financial information then such a supplementary financial information becomes integral part of the financial statement so auditor needs to check this whether these supplementary financial information is integral part of financial statements if yes supplementary financial information is integral then auditor should also give opinion on such supplementary financial information if auditor feels that no this supplementary financial information is not integral part of the financial statements in such case auditor needs to determine whether such a supplementary financial information has been properly bifurcated a, a, a proper differentiation has been shown between the financial statements and the supplementary financial information or not has to be checked by the auditor if in case proper differentiation has not been shown auditor needs to ask the management to change the presentation so that a proper differentiation will be made be between financial statements and supplementary financial information if management refuses to make such a uh, bifurcation or the differentiation then auditor needs to refer in his audit report to that supplementary financial information and state that auditor has not audited such supplementary financial information and auditor is not giving any opinion on such supplementary information okay uh, supplementary financial information this point he needs to mention in audit report if management refuses to make the bifurcation or the differentiation hope that is clear so by that ss 700 gets completed next moving to ss 705 ss 705 basically ss 705 is all about format of the audit report when auditor is modifying his opinion so sa 705 uh, it will be dealing with the types of modifications to the auditor's report so it will be done once we discuss the types of modification basically auditor's opinion auditor's opinion it can be either unmodified opinion or modified opinion unmodified opinion means clean opinion and this modified opinion it can be of three types one is qualified opinion another one is adverse opinion and the one is disclaimer of opinion now we need to see when in which situations auditor will give qualified opinion in which situations auditor will give adverse and in which situations auditor will disclaim his opinion now this decision it can be taken based on three factors you need to check three factors what are they first one whether auditor has obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence this you need to check next whether the misstatements that the auditor has identified are material or not so material misstatements and the third point that you need to check is whether misstatements are pervasive or not these three points you need to check first of all sufficient appropriate audit evidence you know what is sufficient appropriate audit evidence material misstatements so as per sa320 you would have determined the materiality whether the misstatements are crossing that materiality level or not that you need to check and pervasive pervasive means present across the financial statements okay there are many misstatements in the financial statements wherever you see there are misstatements in the financial statements that means misstatements are present across the financial statements various items of the financial statements are misstated so there is pervasiveness of the misstatements so you need to check whether misstatements are pervasive another way in which the misstatement can be pervasive is not many items might be misstated 
only one item must, might be misstated but that item which is misstated represents most of the portion of financial statements like for example let's say there is misstatement in the inventory and inventory represents 80 percent of the total assets of the company now in this situation you can say that even though only uh, even though the misstatement is present only in one item since it represents 80 percent of the total assets of the company it is pervasive also okay because of its size it has become pervasive so you need to check this now based on this we will determine whether to give qualified opinion or to give adverse opinion or to give disclaimer of opinion okay let's see now now in this qualified opinion there are two situations in in which you will give qualified opinion first of all sufficient appropriate audit evidence auditor has obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence and the misstatements are material but they are not pervasive in this situation you will give qualified opinion next auditor has not obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence and auditor feels that if at all there are any misstatements in the financial statements they will be only material but they will not be pervasive in this situation also auditor will give qualified opinion hope that is clear next coming to adverse opinion auditor has obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence and auditor finds that based on that audit evidence auditor finds that the misstatements are material as well as pervasive in that situation auditor will give adverse opinion finally disclaimer auditor has not obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence but auditor feels that if at all there are any misstatements in the entity's financial statements those misstatements will be both material as well as pervasive in that situation auditor will disclaim his opinion disclaim means auditor is not ready to give any opinion auditor is not claiming any opinion he is disclaiming his opinion okay he is not giving any uh, he is not giving his opinion that is the disclaimer of opinion okay so this way you will determine which type of opinion auditor needs to give if you want you can just take a screenshot of this okay so the same uh, i have presented it in the form of a chart in the handwritten chart you can go through it now when you are giving qualified opinion what will be the terminology that you will be using when you are giving adverse opinion what will be the terminology that you will be using the, the terminology will will just see once see if you are giving a qualified opinion then you will in the opinion paragraph okay if you are giving a qualified opinion the name of the opinion paragraph will be qualified opinion if you are giving a adverse opinion the name of the opinion paragraph will be adverse opinion in the same way basis for opinion paragraph it will be basis for adverse opinion basis for qualified opinion okay based on type of opinion you are giving the the name of that paragraph will change so in the opinion paragraph in the qualified opinion paragraph you will state that except for the effects of matters described in basis for qualified opinion financial statements give true and fair view okay except for that particular matter which i have described in the basis for qualified opinion paragraph in the remaining all other aspects financial statements are showing true and fair view that is what you will say in case of qualified opinion if at all you are giving adverse opinion then in the auditor's opinion because of significance of matter are described in basis for adverse opinion paragraph financial statements do not present a true and fair view okay 
here you are saying that entire financial statements they are not presenting a true and fair view because of significance of the matter that i have described in the basis for adverse opinion paragraph and finally in the disclaimer of opinion paragraph you will say that state that auditor does not express any opinion okay auditor is not expressing any opinion because of the reason that he has not obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence and the misstatements could be material as well as pervasive okay next that is with respect to modification of the opinion now after auditor has accepted the audit engagement if a limitation on scope has been imposed okay auditor has accepted the engagement and after accepting while doing the audit management is saying that auditor you you don't attend physical verification of the inventory auditor you don't send balance confirmation to the debtors like this management is putting limitations on the scope of the auditor now in this situation what the auditor has to do see limitations on the scope by management after acceptance of the auditor auditor concludes possible effects of undetected misstatements could be material but not pervasive okay management they are not allowing me to do all these things na so first of all what you'll do is you'll ask the management management why you are not allowing me okay you'll inquire with the management and you will determine the reasonableness of uh, the reasons that the management is giving and after that you will try to perform alternate audit procedures and if by performing alternate audit procedures also you are not able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence means then you will follow this chart you will see i am not able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence now then whether if at all there are any misstatements in that uh, area where i am not able to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence whether they will be material or they will be both material and pervasive based on that you will check the type of opinion that you have to you okay the impact on the opinion you will decide see you feel that could be material but not pervasive here you have not obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence and feeling that misstatements could be material but they are not pervasive that means qualified opinion you will give on the other hand if you feel that you are not obtaining sufficient appropriate audit evidence because of limitation on the scope and you you are feeling that misstatements could be both material as well as pervasive that means you will give disclaimer of opinion first uh, okay first of all you will see in this situation whether it is possible to withdraw from the engagement okay if it is not possible to withdraw from the engagement then you will go for disclaimer of the opinion see could be both material and pervasive whether withdrawal is possible if withdrawal is possible then instead of disclaiming your opinion okay instead of not giving any of the opinion it is better to withdraw from the engagement now so you will see you will go for withdrawal if as per law or regulation withdrawal is not possible then you will disclaim the opinion hope that is clear next responsibility as per lodr regulation see whenever auditor he is withdrawing from a listed entity then there is certain a responsibility that has been placed on the auditor by lodr regulations basically lodr regulations they will be issued by sebi securities exchange board of india and they are applicable only for listed entities now as you know in a financial year there will be four quarters right q1 q2 q3 q4 now if auditor withdraws within 45 days from completion of a quarter then there is responsibility on the auditor to issue limited review report for that quarter and resign okay if auditor resigns within 45 days from the end of the quarter then before resigning auditor needs to submit the limited review report for that particular quarter hope that is clear this is the first responsibility next if auditor uh, resigns after 45 days from the end of the quarter that means during this period in that case auditor needs to submit limited review report for that quarter as well as next quarter this is a second responsibility third responsibility if before resignation auditor has conducted a limited review and issued a limited review report for first three quarters in that case there is responsibility on the auditor 
to issue limited review report for the fourth quarter as well as the complete audit report for the entire financial statement uh, for entire financial year only after that auditor can resign hope that is clear so this is the responsibility that has been placed by lodr requirements on the auditor who wanted to resign from a listed company okay so that you can go through in this chart next sa 706 emphasis of matter and other matter paragraph in the auditor's report see uh, basically you need to remember when emphasis of matter will be given when other matter paragraph will be given now if auditor wanted to emphasize any matter that is already present in the financial statement then auditor will give emphasis of matter paragraph let's say management has given a particular disclosure in the financial statement auditor wanted the users to see that disclosure auditor wanted uh, to bring that disclosure to the notice of the users so then what the auditor will do auditor will emphasize that particular disclosure in his audit report because every user he will obviously read his audit report so in the audit report if there is emphasis of matter paragraph and in the emphasis of matter paragraph auditor has referred any of the disclosure in the financial statement then the user he will feel that auditor is emphasizing means it is something important for purpose of understanding financial statements so let me go and read that disclosure or let me let me go and read that particular item so in this way auditor brings attention of the user to any item in the financial statement by using emphasis of matter paragraph hope that is clear next coming to other matter paragraph now whenever auditor wanted to communicate something to the user about the audit that the auditor has conducted then auditor will mention that in the other matter paragraph let's say for example uh, auditor has audited consolidated financial statements now in the consolidated financial statements the financial statements of various subsidiaries will be included and it is possible uh, that all those subsidiaries might not have been audited by the uh, principal auditor okay those subsidiaries they might have been audited by some other component auditors and the principal auditor that is auditor of consolidated financial statements he might be relying on the audit reports of that other auditors now in this situation auditor can communicate this with uh, uh, communicate this aspect to the uh, users of the financial statements in the other matter paragraph this is because this is something related to the audit he can state that of the total assets that are present in the consolidated financial statements assets to the extent of so much value were audited by some other auditors okay revenue to the extent of so much value is belonging to some other components and audited by some other auditors since it is related to audit aspect this can be mentioned in other matter paragraph hope that is clear so that's it sa706 is quite simple it is just that you need to understand when you will give other matter paragraph when you will give uh, uh, emphasis of matter paragraph and another important point is if you wanted to present any matter in the emphasis of matter paragraph it should not be determined as a key audit matter paragraph okay if you are giving any matter in a key audit matter paragraph the same point again you need not mention in emphasis of matter paragraph same for other matter paragraph also if you are giving any point in uh, key audit matter paragraph again that one you need you need not mention in uh, other matter paragraph hope that is clear See, related to understanding of financial statements emphasis of matter paragraph is related to understanding of the financial statements whereas other matter paragraph is related to understanding of the audit and the definition you can go through that matter should not be determined as a cam here also matter should not be determined as a cam auditor would not be required to modify auditor's opinion because of such matter see because of a particular matter auditor is modifying his opinion now the same point because of which he is modifying his opinion okay this point he would have mentioned in basis for modification opinion mod, modification of opinion paragraph that same point again he need not mention in emphasis of matter paragraph okay repetition is not required and also auditor he should not think that uh, instead of 
modifying the opinion because of a point okay because of a particular misstatement or because of a particular point auditor has to modify the opinion but auditor doesn't want it to modify the opinion so instead of modifying the opinion because of that matter i will include that matter in emphasis of matter paragraph no you should not do like that okay if because of a particular misstatement you are required to modify the opinion means you must modify the opinion you cannot show that i have uh, given that point in the emphasis of matter paragraph i will not modify no you should not do that hope that is clear next sa 701 communicating key audit matters in the audit report key audit matter paragraph first of all this uh, key audit matter it is uh, mandatory only for listed entities for unlisted entities it is not mandatory however if auditor wanted to give uh, this key audit matter even in the audit report of unlisted entities he can give it but it is not mandatory hope that is clear next what are these key audit matter uh, key audit matters first of all these key audit matters are those matters that in the auditor's professional judgment were of most significant in the audit of financial statements of the current period okay in the audit of current period financial statements the matters which are most significant to the audit in the professional judgment of the auditor are known as key audit matters however there is a procedure that has been prescribed in order to identify this key audit matters we will discuss that procedure while discussing that procedure you will get a even more clearer uh, clear idea of what key audit matters are okay now first of all why this key audit matters have to be communicated in the audit report what is the purpose of key audit matter paragraph first of all the purpose of key audit matter paragraph is to improve the communicative value of the audit report okay and to uh, give some additional information to the users of the financial statement this is the purpose of the key audit matter paragraph and also to provide a basis for communicating with those charged with governance basically auditor will select key audit matters only from those matters that have been communicated with those charged with governance so in case of listed entities since auditor has to mandatorily give key audit matters in order to select the key audit matters auditor will select them from those matters that are communicated to those charged with governance he has to mandatorily communicate with those charged with governance because of for the purpose of selection of key audit matters without communicating with those charged with governance auditor cannot select key audit matters okay so this uh, imposes a mandatory responsibility on the auditor to first of all communicate with those charged with governance so key audit matters presenting key audit matters will provide a basis for further communication with those charged with governance okay so this is the purpose of key audit matter enhance the communicative value of the audit report provide additional information to the users assist users to understand the entity and provide basis to further engage with the management and those charged with governance and another point you should not consider this key audit matters as substitute for management disclosure in the financial statements let's say for example management has to disclose a particular aspect in the financial statement but management has not disclosed in this situation you should ask the management to make such a disclosure in the financial statements and if such a disclosure is not made what will be the impact of this on your opinion that you need to determine instead of doing that you you should not just escape saying that since management has not disclosed a particular matter in the financial statements what i will do is i will disclose that matter as a key audit matter okay since in the audit report i am disclosing this key audit matter i need not modify my opinion even though the item is not present in the financial statements like this you should not do okay key audit matter is not a substitute for the disclosure that the management has to give in the financial statements hope that is clear and also key audit matter is not a substitute for the modified opinion that has to be given by the auditor okay now because of a particular point auditor has to give modified opinion 
instead of giving modified opinion auditor is stating that i will mention this as a key audit matter paragraph and i will give unmodified opinion no okay if you have to give a key audit uh, if you have to give a modified opinion because of a particular misstatement you must give the modified opinion you can't uh, you know avoid giving modified opinion stating that i will include this in the key audit matter paragraph no key audit matter paragraph is not a substitute for giving modified opinion in the same way key audit matter paragraph is not a substitute for reporting that is required as per sa 570 if there is a material uncertainty with respect to going concern you need to report it as per sa 570 in the separate uh, going concern related paragraph you cannot say that uh, i will you know include this as a key audit matter and i will avoid reporting as per sa 570 no it is not a substitute okay next determining key audit matter how you will determine whether a particular matter is a key audit matter or not there are three steps first of all you would have communicated certain matters to those charged with governance right you will take all those matters that you have communicated with those charged with governance now from these matters you will select the, or you will filter the matters or the items based on three criteria what are those three criteria of these matters which are having higher assessed risk of material misstatement you will select them second criteria which are the significant transactions or events that have occurred during the year you will select them third criteria what are the areas that are having higher estimation uncertainty you will select them okay so from all the matters that you have communicated to those charged with governance you will select those matters based on this criteria now you have selected okay you have filtered the items now from these items also you will further filter based on your professional judgment okay from these items you will determine based on your professional judgment which matters or which items are more significant for the current periods or it so here you will apply your professional judgment based on your professional judgment you will pick up key audit matters from these filtered items or filtered matters hope that is clear so this is how you will identify key audit matters next how to present these key audit matters obviously there will be a separate paragraph that has to be given for this key audit matters with the heading key audit matter okay and e and under this key audit matter paragraph for each key audit matter you have to give uh, appropriate subheading also okay it is not that you will identify only one key audit matter you can identify as many key audit matters as you want and you can uh, mention all those key audit matters under the paragraph key audit matter paragraph okay so for each key audit matter you should select a appropriate subheading also hope that is clear so use appropriate subheading now the introductory paragraph of this key audit matter paragraph should state that these were the most significant items for the audit of current period financial statements and these were addressed in the context of audit and auditor does not provide separate opinion on these items okay these are addressed by the auditor during the audit he uh, and auditor is not providing any separate opinion on these items okay this should be the int introductory paragraph of key audit matter paragraph and each key audit matter in the each key audit matter you should mention why you have determined that particular matter as a key audit matter okay why you are feeling that it is very much significant to the current period audit that you need to mention and you should also mention how you have addressed that particular matter during your audit okay how the matter was addressed these two points you need to address in the each key audit matter section next and what could be the circumstances in which a key audit matter need not be communicated by the auditor there could be two circumstances first of all if law or regulation uh, prohibits the auditor from 
determining a particular matter as a key audit matter that is the first situation law regulation itself doesn't allow the auditor to present that matter as a key audit matter means auditor should not present it next situation auditor feels that in extremely rare circumstances the adverse consequence of doing so would outweigh the public interest benefits okay auditor feels that the adverse impact of communicating a particular matter as a key audit matter is more when compared to the benefit that the users will get because of communicating that key audit matter example let's say for example there is a particular company which uh, is developing certain machinery or certain technology for the indian defense okay for the army it is uh, you know developing a technology or it is developing certain machinery or a certain missiles now while auditing that uh, that particular entity you have determined a particular key audit matter and if you communicate that key audit matter there is certain secret information with respect to that matter okay if you communicate it it will create more harm okay it will reveal the secrets with respect to the indian defense so in such situations the adverse impact of communicating such key audit matter is more when compared to the benefit that the users will get because of such communication okay in that situations auditor can decide not to communicate that particular key audit matter because of the adverse effect it is creating okay so that was the essay 701 next yes a 710 comparative information basically in the financial statements you will be presenting comparative information right this comparative information it can be of two types one is corresponding figures and another one is comparative financial statements so what is the difference between corresponding figures and comparative financial statements let us see in case of corresponding figures you will present prior period figures as a integral part of current periods financial statements for comparison purpose coming to comparative financial statements you will present prior period financial statements for comparison in the current period financial statements but it will not be integral part of current period financial statements and also with respect to cor corresponding figures you will present only previous years okay previous one years uh, comparatives whereas coming to comparative financial statements you will not restrain only to previous one year okay you can present previous two years or three years uh, figures together in case of comparative financial statements okay and this comparative financial statements they will be not they will not be presented as a integral part of current period financial statements what is this integral part basically if you are presenting as a integral part then uh, here in case of corresponding figures you are presenting as a integral part now uh, in in that case those corresponding figures they can be read only with relation to current period financial uh, statements whereas if you are not presenting as a integral part here comparative financial statements you are not presenting as a integral part now so they can be referred both with reference to current period financial statements or else if you want you can refer those comparative financial statements individually also because they are not integral part of current period financial statements okay that is a difference between being integral part not being integral part okay and in case of corresponding figures if you have presented corresponding figures the auditor in his audit opinion he will not separately refer to the corresponding figures whereas if the management has presented comparative financial statements then auditor in his audit report will refer to each of that comparative financial statement hope that is clear and intended to be read only in relation to the current period figures as i have already told you corresponding figures since they will be integral part of current period financial statements they are intended to be read only with reference to the current period financial statements hope that is clear now audit procedures with respect to comparative financial information 
or comparative information. So what audit procedures you will perform with respect to comparative information? First of all, you need to check whether that the comparative information that you have presented in the current period of financial, inf uh, financial statements are agreeing with the prior period financial statements. See, evaluate whether comparative information agrees with the prior period figures. It is not that in the current year for comparison purpose you have presented some other figures but if you go and see in the financial statements of the previous year there are some other figures no you have to exactly use the same figures for the purpose of comparative information also and also the accounting policies that are used for the purpose of uh, that are used in the comparative information should be consistently followed in the current period also See, accounting policies reflected in comparative information are consistent with those applied in the current period. And if auditor finds any possible misstatements in the comparative information, then auditor needs to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence to confirm that misstatement, whether that misstatement actually exists or not. With respect to that, he needs to obtain audit evidence. And he needs to request a written representation for all the periods that are uh, presented in the financial statements okay in the comparative financial statement sorry in the current period financial statements for the purpose of comparison if you have presented more than two years comparative financial statements then you need to obtain written representation with respect to all those years that are presented in the financial statements and also if in the profit and loss statement if any prior period item has been reflected prior period item generally you will reflect it when there is some misstatement in the previous period and you don't want it to disturb those previous period the respective adjustment you will give in the current period through prior period adjustment so if at all there are any such prior period item in the profit and loss statement of current year with respect to that also you need to obtain a written representation so these are the audit procedures you will perform with respect to comparative information and coming to reporting aspect now audit reporting when corresponding figures are presented that is one aspect and audit reporting when comparative financial statements are presented so how the auditor will report in each of these two situations we'll see firstly if corresponding figures are presented then auditors report in, in auditors report auditor will not separately refer to that corresponding figures except in the following situations okay generally auditor in his audit report he will not refer to corresponding figures except in the following situation but whereas if comparative financial statements are presented then auditor shall refer to each of that comparative financial statement that is presented that is the first difference between uh, uh, that is the first difference in reporting aspect between a comparative financial statement and the corresponding figures see auditor's opinion shall not refer to corresponding figures except in the following situations okay in the following situations you can refer corresponding figures what are they first of all in the prior period audit report is modified okay in the prior period the audit report is modified and the reason such uh, the reason for such modification is not yet un, uh, is not yet resolved in the current period in that case you can refer that prior period that is you can refer that corresponding figures because the misstatement is not yet corrected even in the current period financial statement also so you are referring that corresponding figure okay this is the first situation when you will refer the corresponding figures in the audit report okay when there is a modification of the opinion in the prior period and the reason for, for such modification is not yet resolved okay matter giving rise to such modification is unresolved in this is the first situation when you will uh, when auditor will refer corresponding figures in his audit report next prior period audit report is unmodified okay in the prior period the audit report is unmodified clean audit report but auditor during the current period audit he found that there are some misstatements in the prior period even though there are certain misstatements in the prior period the audit report that has been given is unmodified 
in that situation auditor needs to check whether proper adjustment as per applicable financial reporting framework has been made to correct such misstatement or not if such uh, if such adjustment is not made then auditor needs to give qualified or adverse opinion in the current audit report with respect to corresponding figures okay so in this situation also you are referring the corresponding figures because the, the misstatement is in corresponding figures only since the corresponding figures that is previous period financial statements there are misstatements the same will be presented in the corresponding figures so there is misstatement in corresponding figures so you are modifying the opinion in the current period why you are modify, modifying because of the corresponding so you are referring to the corresponding this is the second situation you will uh, this is the second situation in which you will refer the corresponding figures in your audit report next prior period financial statements have not at all been audited if the prior period financial statements have not been audi uh, audited then in the other matter paragraph you need to state that the prior period financial statements have not been audited and also you need to remember that just statement of such a fact that financial statements of the prior period are not audited will not relieve the responsibility of the present auditor to obtain audit evidence with respect to the opening balances hope this is clear okay next prior period financial statements audited by predecessor auditor okay prior period financial statements are audited but they are audited by predecessor auditor another auditor has audited the prior period financial statements in that case if you are allowed by law or regulation to use or to refer to the audit report of such predecessor auditor then in the other matter paragraph you need to state that the prior period financial statements are audited by some other predecessor auditor and you should also state in the other matter paragraph the type of opinion that has been given in that previous audit report and if the type of opinion is modified opinion you should also state the reasons such for, for such modification of the opinion and you should also state the date of such audit report hope that is clear so this is a reporting when corresponding figures are used now in the reporting we have discussed these two points now prior period financial statements not audited prior period financial statements audited by predecessor auditor these two points are similar even in case of comparative financial statements also see prior period financial statements are not audited in that case state the same in the other matter paragraph however such a statement of in uh, such a statement in the other matter paragraph will not relieve the responsibility of the current auditor from obtaining audit evidence with respect to opening balances next if a prior period financial statements audited by predecessor auditor then also same point that we have discussed earlier state that the predecessor auditor has audited the prior period financial statements and type of opinion if it is modified opinion reasons for such opinion and date of report okay these points you need to mention next the first point we i have already discussed auditor's opinion shall refer to each of such comparative financial statements if in the financial statements comparative financial statements are presented then auditor in his audit report he must refer each of such comparative financial statement however if corresponding figures are presented he need not refer corresponding figures except in the uh, exceptional situations that we have discussed earlier Th that is the one more point with respect to comparative financial statements next if opinion of such just a second if opinion on such comparative financial statements differ from previously expressed opinion now in this situation the current auditor he himself has audited the prior period financial statement also but the audit opinion that he has expressed in the prior period is different from the audit opinion that he is expressing now with respect to the comparative financial uh, statements because i i have told you na when comparative financial statements are presented auditor he needs to refer he needs to express opinion on each of such comparative financial statement so now when expressing opinion on such comparative financial statement the opinion that the auditor has given previously is differing from the opinion that the auditor is giving now in that situation auditor in the other matter paragraph he needs to mention the significant reason why the opinion is differing from such opinion which has been previously given hope that is clear <coughs> next sorry if predecessor auditor issued unmodified opinion but material misstatement exists in the prior period financial statements again the same same point 
the peer to peer financial statements they are audited by some other auditor and that auditor has given unmodified opinion but there are misstatements in the peer period financial statements okay our current auditor during the current audit he found that there are certain misstatements with respect to peer period financial statements but when he has seen the audit report audit report was unmodified audit report now in this situation what the current auditor has to do he has to communicate this to those charged with with the governance and management and ask them to bring this fact to the you know uh, to communicate this fact to the predecessor auditor and ask the predecessor auditor to give a new audit report okay the management they have to amend the financial statements and on that amended financial statements the predecessor auditor has to give new audit report if they have given new audit report then it is fine but what if management refuses to amend the financial statements if management refuses to amend the financial statements then the current auditor he needs to consider what type of audit opinion he has to give in the current year because of such uh, you know refusal by the management impact on the opinion has to be considered hope that is clear so that was essay 710 next essay 720 auditors responsibility with respect to other information what is this other information basically in the annual report every listed entity it will give annual report right in that annual report apart from financial statements and the audit report there will be various other information that will be present okay various information with respect to the company's activities various financial ratios the board's report management's report various things will be present so all such other information that is presented in the annual report okay all the information that is presented in the annual report except financial statements and the audit report is known as other information Hope that is clear hope you are clear with the definition of other information now what is the responsibility of the auditor with respect to such uh, with respect to this other information auditor he needs to first of all obtain this other information and after after obtaining other information auditor needs to verify whether there is any material inconsistency between this other information and the financial statements or whether there is any inconsistency between this other information and the knowledge of the auditor if at all there is any such mis uh, inconsistency or if the other information is containing any misstatement then auditor he needs to uh, respond appropriately okay in his audit report that is the objective of the auditor with respect to other information you can go through that in the chart that i have given now obtaining other information how the auditor will obtain other information auditor he will first of all discuss with the management management what uh, what is the what are the various information that you will give in your annual report okay all the information that management gives in the annual report becomes other information apart from financial statements and audit report so you will discuss with that with the management and you will make appropriate arrangements with the management so that management will submit such other information which they are thinking to include in the annual report to the auditor before they are you know published to the public before they are furnished to the public and the auditor should take care that this information should be this other information should be obtained from the management prior to the date of audit report okay this care has to be taken however auditor can also obtain other information after the date of audit report okay if at all some other information is not available before the date of audit report then even after the audit report date also he can obtain other information there is no issue with respect to that okay but however as a uh, before the date of audit report if there is uh, non availability of any of the other information then auditor he needs to obtain a statement from the management stating that once such other information is prepared by the management management will furnish okay management will send a copy of that other information to the auditor before publishing that other information to the public hope that is clear next responding to material inconsistency now after obtaining other information you will check whether this other information is uh, having any material inconsistency between 
financial statements and between the knowledge of the auditor and you will also discuss with the management if at all you find that there is any uh, possibility of misstatement in the other information you will perform audit procedures to confirm that misstatement or if you feel that the information the understanding of the entity the knowledge that you have obtained with respect to the entity has to be updated okay because other information that has been presented is correct only but it is not matching with your uh, knowledge okay you still need to obtain understanding with respect to the entity in that case you will perform procedures to update your knowledge with respect to the entity's business okay next responding to material misstatements in other information if you find material misstatement in the other information how you will respond first of all you will request management to make the correction if management agrees to make the correction you will verify whether that correction has been made properly or not okay if management refuses to make the correction then you will communicate to those charged with governance see those charged with governance i have uh, you know asked the management to correct the misstatements in the other information but they are refusing to do it you please correct the other information like this you will communicate to those charged with governance but even after communicating with those charged with the governance also the other information has not been corrected the material misstatements has not been corrected in that case you will check whether this other information is obtained before the date of audit report <coughs> sorry that means there are misstatements in this other information now nah? and this other information has been obtained before the date of audit report still you have not dated the audit report before dating the audit report only you found that there are misstatements in the other information in this situation you can consider the impact on the opinion that you are going to give in the audit report so consider implication for the audit report or if you feel that the misstatement is so severe then you can also consider withdrawing from the engagement if permitted that is the situation if you have not yet given the audit report if you have not yet dated the audit report what if you have given the audit report you have dated the audit report and given the audit report after that management has given certain other information to you and in that other information you found misstatements and ask the management to correct that misstatements but management is not uh, you know management is refusing to correct the information you also asked the those charged with governance even they are refusing to correct in that situation what you have to do in that situation you have to take appropriate action to bring this fact to the users of the financial statements because in the audit report you have not communicated that there are misstatements in the audit in the other information so you should bring this fact that there are misstatements in the other information that the management has submitted to me after the date of audit report okay this fact has to be brought to the notice of the users of the financial statements hope that is clear next when other information paragraph will be included see generally other information paragraph will be included in the audit report only if auditor has obtained the other information see we can bifurcate this into two types one is in case of listed entities in case of listed entities audit report auditor will include the other information paragraph in the audit report when auditor has obtained other information or auditor expects to obtain other information okay in in those both situations auditor will include other information paragraph in the audit report what will be discussed in this other information paragraph i'll i'll tell you there are certain points that needs to be mentioned in the other information paragraph next coming to unlisted entity in case of unlisted entities audit report auditor will include other information paragraph in the audit report when auditor has obtained some or all of the other information okay only if auditor has obtained uh, other information in case of unlisted entity only then auditor will include other information paragraph in the audit report if auditor expects to obtain other information in that case auditor will not include other information paragraph in the audit report of unlisted entity but in case of listed entity if auditor expects to obtain other information after date of audit report then he will include the other information paragraph in the audit report and in that other information paragraph he will say that uh, this information this other information some other information i will obtain after some time like this he will mention in the other information paragraph okay next so how this other information paragraph has to be presented what points should be there in this other information paragraph 
basically this other information paragraph point we have not discussed in essay 700 because uh, since it is having a separate standard essay 720 uh, we are discussing this other information paragraph here okay so in this other information paragraph you need to include a statement that management is responsible for the other information auditor is not responsible for preparing other information it is responsibility of the management to prepare this other information and identification of other information that has been obtained okay you have obtained such a certain other information from the management now you need to identify what what uh, what are the other information that you have obtained you need to clearly mention in the other information paragraph and the statement that auditor's opinion does not cover the other information okay auditor's opinion opinion will not cover okay auditor is not giving any opinion on the other information that fact you need to state and description of auditor's responsibility relating to other information what is the responsibility of the auditor with respect to other information i have told you now he has to just to verify whether there is any material inconsistency between other information and the financial statements material inconsistency between other information and the knowledge of the auditor if at all there is any material incons inconsistency then he needs to take appropriate action accordingly only that is the responsibility of the auditor with respect to other information the same you need to mention here and if other information prior to the audit report yeah if the auditor has obtained other information prior to the audit report and auditor finds that if at all there are any misstatements in that other information auditor needs to mention those misstatements in the other information paragraph if he finds that there are no misstatements in the other information then he needs to simply state that auditor has nothing to report with respect to other information Hope that is clear by this we have completed essay 720 next duties of auditor section 143 basically in section 143 there will be section 143 subsection 1 on which items the auditor needs to inquire basically here on section 143 subsection 1 items auditor needs to report on that item only if there is any negative remark with respect to that particular item okay that is the reason why the section uses the term inquire okay the section doesn't use the term report inquire means auditor needs to inquire into that particular matter and if there is any negative remark with respect to that particular matter only then auditor needs to report it in the audit report if there is no negative remark with, with uh, respect to any of these item then auditor he need not report about these items in the audit report so what what are these items on which the auditor needs to inquire as per section number 143 subsection 1 basically there are six items firstly whether loans and advances that have been given by the company are properly secured and whether the terms of that loan loans and advances are prejudicial to the interest of the entity this has to be inquired by the auditor hope that is clear next whether transactions which are represented by mere book entries or prejudicial to the interest of the entity generally what happens is at the end of the year some transactions some entries will be passed through some journals okay some journal entries adjustment entries will be passed so such a transaction actually it would not have taken place but in order to make adjustment in the books of accounts you will pass generally you will pass some journal entries so whether such transactions which are represented merely by a book entry or prejudicial to the interest of the entity that you need to inquire and whether shares debentures and other securities of the company sold at a price less than the purchase price okay the company has purchased some shares or debentures or any other securities at let's say some 1 lakh rupees but now they are selling them at 50,000 only, 80,000 only. Okay, they are selling at a price less than the purchase price. In that case, also, auditor needs to report. And whether loans and advances by company have been shown as deposits. Okay, if the company has given any loans and advances, you need to show them as loans given, but you should not show them as deposits. And whether personal expenses are charged to revenue account, okay, you should not charge the personal expenses of, let's say, various directors or employees to the company's account, okay. And where shares are allotted for cash, whether the cash has actually been received, if the cash has actually not been received, whether the position that is shown in the balance sheet is correct or not. Generally, company 
whenever it gives shares okay whenever it allots shares some companies they will take the money in the form of calls okay call one call two in in the form of calls they will take the amount so if they are uh, you know taking in the form of calls you should uh, record in your books as amount received only if had only if that that cash has been received if the cash has not yet been received you sh you should uh, record in your books of accounts as receivable okay whether that position has been shown properly or not that you need to inquire so these are the six items on which auditor needs to inquire as per section number 143 subsection 1 okay next section 143 subsection 3 here under section 143 subsection 3 there will be certain nine points on which auditor needs to report see you should observe the terminology section 143 subsection 3 uses the term report that means even if auditor finds a negative remark or auditor doesn't find any, any negative remark auditor has to report on the points of section 143 subsection 3 but on the points of section 143 subsection 1 only if auditor finds any negative remark the auditor needs to report hope that is clear so what are those nine points as per section number 143 subsection 3 auditor he needs to report whether he has obtained all the information that is necessary for the purpose of audit or not and he should also report whether the company is maintaining proper books of accounts and whether he has received the returns with respect to the branches okay and also if there are any branches which have not been audited by him whether he has received audit reports of such branches which are audited by some other auditors and how you have utilized those audit reports in your audit even on this point you need to report okay report on branches audited by others is sent to him and how he has dealt with such report next whether balance sheet and profit and loss statement of the company are in agreement with the books of accounts or not even on this point you need to report and whether the company has prepared its financial statements as per the applicable accounting standards or not even this point you need to report under section 143 subsection 3 next whether any director is disqualified under section 164 subsection 2 of the companies act 2013 okay there are certain disqualification points that are you know listed in section number 164 subsection 2 so you need to verify whether any of the director is being hit by those disqualifications of section number 164 subsection 2 next auditor needs to report on observations on the transactions having adverse effect on the company's functioning and any qualification relating to maintenance of books of accounts by the company okay with respect to maintenance of books of accounts any qualification you need to report and whether company have adequate internal financial controls with respect to financial statements okay uh, internal financial controls over financial reporting whether those internal financial controls are proper or not on these nine points you need to report and also in this section number 143 subsection 3 itself there is also another point the reporting requirement under rule 11 of company audit and auditors rules 2014 in this rule 11 there are six points on which the auditor needs to report what are those six points first of all whether the impact of pending litigations has been properly disclosed in the financial statements or not whether provision has been made for the foreseeable long-term uh, contracts okay for the foreseeable losses on the long term contract whether the proper provision applicable provision has been made for those foreseeable losses on the long term contracts or not you need to report next whether the amount has been transferred to investor education and protection fund on a timely manner basically if uh, there are various list of amounts that will be transferred to investor education and protection fund uh, let's say for example company has declared the dividend and no one has claimed that uh, some of the dividend okay uh, some shareholders they were not present so they have they haven't claimed that dividend if such a dividend remains unclaimed for a period of seven years then it has to be transferred to investor education and protection fund by the company like this there are certain items which has to be transferred by the company to investor education and protection fund whether such a transfer has been made on time or not you need to report next 
whether the dividend that has been declared by the company and paid by the company is in in compliance with section number 123 of the companies act 2013 or not even on this point you need to report next whether the accounting system that the company is using that is the accounting software that the company is using whether it is having the feature of audit trial or not what is meant by this audit trial basically if you uh, enable audit trial for your uh, you know accounting software it will record the log of changes that have been made to the entries okay it will record who has passed the entry at what time the entry was passed okay and if any alteration has been made who has altered and how that alt, uh, you know due to that alteration which accounts have affected all that data will be recorded by the system itself if you enable this audit trial so uh, basically from 1st april 2022 onwards it is mandatory for all the companies uh, to have this audit trial feature enabled on the accounting software that they are using hope that is clear next whether management has represented to the auditor that the company has not received uh, sorry company has no funds loaned advanced to any intermediary with an intention to benefit ultimate beneficiary okay you need to obtain a representation from the management that company has not given any funds to any intermediary with an intention to benefit a final beneficiary okay that is binami transaction okay no such type of binami transaction taken place in the same way company has not received any funds from any person with an intention to benefit the final beneficiary okay company has neither issued funds for the purpose of benefiting a another beneficiary in the same way it has not received any funds that is it has not acted as intermediary to benefit the final beneficiary that is no uh, binami transaction has been taken uh, has been entered by the company okay the company has not conducted any binami transactions with respect to this auditor needs to report okay so these are the duties of the auditor under section 143 subsection 3 and also apart from this auditor is having duty to sign the audit report and a duty to comply with the auditing standards okay and by this the chapter gets completed we are also having fraud reporting uh, it is not present in the chart i'll just explain you fraud reporting see fraud reporting if amount of if amount involved in fraud is less than 1 crore rupees then auditor needs to report it to audit committee if the company is having audit committee auditor needs to report this fraud to audit committee if the company is not having audit committee it is uh, having audit committee is not mandatory for all the companies right there is certain limit only if that limit is satisfied the company uh, has to establish a audit committee if the audit committee is not there then auditor needs to report the fraud to board of directors as per the availability so if the amount involved in the fraud is less than 1 crore rupees auditor needs to report the same to audit committee or board of directors within two days okay and in this in this reporting auditor needs to report amount involved in the fraud nature of fraud and the persons involved in the fraud okay that is the reporting requirement if amount involved in the fraud is less than 1 crore rupees what if amount involved in the fraud is more than or equal to 1 crore rupees here within two days okay within two days auditor needs to report to audit committee or board of directors and seek their response auditor needs to wait for their response for 45 days okay wait for 45 days for their response once auditor has received their response from the date of receipt of response within next 50 days uh, 15 days auditor needs to forward the report of the auditor as well as the response that has been received from the audit committee or the board of directors okay within 15 days forward 
report along with the response to whom you need to forward you need to forward to central government okay next what if auditor has not received response from the board of directors or audit committee within 45 days you will wait for 45 days if in that 45 days you haven't received the response means the immediate next day itself you will you know forward just your report to the central government and you will also state that you haven't received any response from the management hope that is clear and also auditor he needs to furnish form adt4 to mca ministry of corporate affairs hope that is clear so this is the reporting requirement with respect to fraud if you want you can take a screenshot i will also give this chart in the handwritten chart that i provide uh, to you okay so by this this uh, chapter uh, reporting gets completed in the next class we will be meeting with a new chapter and uh, if you wanted to purchase our classes, you can visit our website lecturepedia.in and you can place your order. Okay. By this, I will be winding up this video as of now. Take care. Bye-bye. See you.